I'm gonna be building an alert bar across the bottom of the home page that is really gonna be a call to action. And it's cool because we're gonna play around with conditional logic and we're gonna walk you through how to accomplish that with the Divi Builder pretty easily. So as I start off every video, let's go into the WordPress and we're gonna look down here at the bottom right hand corner. We're using WordPress 5.8.1 and Divi is 4.11.1. So Elegant Themes had a little bit of time to work through that first round of bugs with 4.11 that introduced conditional logic. And now we can kind of play with it a little bit and see what's what. So we're, what we're gonna do here is we want an overlay that could work on any page, but specifically it's gonna show up on the home page here. And that's what we're gonna build. Um, we're gonna build it so that it shows up on the home page only. So let's go into Theme Builder and we're gonna add a new template and we're gonna check use on home page only and we're gonna create this template. So what we're gonna do here is, we wanna use the home page that we've already designed, right? So we've designed that in pages, the, the layout is there, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So we'll click up here, uh, we'll just leave this right here for now, and we'll go to the home page. So we've got this social media consultant layout that comes with Divi, we loaded it up, it's got the page here, and we're good to go. So it's the home page, right? We wanna put a bar across the bottom of it, so let's go back into the back end. We're gonna to go to Divi, then the Theme Builder, and we're going to add that new template like we just did, only use it on the home page, and we're gonna create that template. And because we have that page built on the home page, there's one thing we're gonna to have to do that's a little bit different whenever you're in the Theme Builder. So we're gonna add the custom body, and we're gonna build custom body. And here we're gonna actually build from scratch. So build from scratch, we're gonna insert a row, and I'm gonna start this with text. That way we have just a section here that's got some text in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a second section, a regular, insert a single row or a row with a single column. And I'm going to add this module post content. And what that does is that it takes whatever design you have on whichever page this theme builder layout is going to be on and it makes sure that whatever you've built inside the visual builder for that page shows up right here. So there's a few things that we've got to do. The first thing you really wanna do, and, and I'll show you the difference real quick. I'm just gonna leave it like this with the spacing and everything here, and I'm gonna style the bar, but I'm gonna leave this content kind of as it is and show you one thing that's critical to make sure that the layout looks good, so stick around for that. So what we're gonna do is style this top bar, right? So we're gonna go to the background, I'm gonna add this color, and then I wanna jump into the text and actually change this text. Join to save 50%. I want to make this text stand out, so we're gonna go white. I'm going to um, select Poppins. It's always a great font, looks good. And we're gonna go ultra, ultra bold and I'm going to increase the size so that it really stands out. And now we've gotta shrink this thing down. It just looks kind of ridiculous being that big. So we're gonna go back into the settings in the section, go under design, spacing, and then we need to change the top and bottom padding to zero. That way the only padding that's here is on this row and in the columns of material or of content. So that doesn't really do a whole lot, right? Join and save 50%. What we could do is add a button that has a call to action and it could look something like this. We could add a second column, hit the button. And I'm gonna go through this really quickly, but we could style the button, make this, the text size a little bit bigger, make the font blue, make the button white, make the border um, transparent change the font to Poppins, go super ultra bold, and, and maybe uppercase, and change the content to join now or save now. Could be something along these lines, right? And then the button's the left oriented, we can make the text over to the right, and then things look okay, not good, but okay. What will make it look better is if everything is vertically centered. And I'll show you a quick tip on how to do that. If you go into the column itself, 
that you want to center vertically the, the content, you go under advanced, custom CSS, and we're just going to put margin, auto, zero pixels. That way the left and right aren't, and that will do it, but you see things still don't look right. And that's because by default, the column height on Divi is not equal. So if we go back to the column settings, or from the column settings into the row settings, hit design, go under sizing, and this option here, equalize column height, it will push everything to the middle. So this looks pretty good. I think that we could probably shrink things down a little bit more, so we'll go to row, spacing, let's do 10. I think that looks pretty good. So this is one option, right? It is definitely one option. You can do it like this, um, and this would be really cool. It would look good. What I think I'm going to do though, is I'm actually going to delete this second column. I am going to get over this text. I'm gonna center the text rather than right align. And then I'm going to change some of this spacing again, because 10 was good when we had the button, but I think we need to go up a little bit here. And I think 20 is probably the number. So let's do 20 and we're going to change a few of these things, right? So I would say we link up the section. We're just gonna create a link out of this one and this is just a, a placeholder. And what we're going to do is change this background color on hover. And so we're gonna go from blue to black. And then we're gonna come over here for the transition and by default, Divi already has a transition in place. So I think we're gonna be okay to leave it just like that. So let's save this, and then we're gonna exit the theme builder, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the front end, because we're not quite where we wanna be, but we're making progress. So we've created this for the home page. I'm gonna save this theme builder layout, and we're gonna go out to the front end of the website, and you'll see that the this is in line, and as we hover over it, we've got this all the way across full width, uh, basically a button. But you see how the layout is shrunk in. This is absolutely not what we want. So we need to go do some more work in the back end of the site. So we're gonna jump back into the theme builder, go back into the home page. We're gonna edit this custom body. And a few things we need to do. Because this was scrunched, you see it really just took up the space of this row. We need to change the spacing on the section. So we're gonna go under section and both left, right, and top and bottom padding, we're gonna get rid of. So that's one piece, but the other piece is that we need this row to be full width. So to do that, you go under row, design, and then sizing, and this max width, it's currently at 1080 pixels, we need it to be 100%. We're gonna center a line and then we're also going to kick this normal width out to 100%. So when we do that, I'm going to save it and we'll jump back into the front end so you can see the difference that it's made. So we're getting closer, we're, we're getting closer, right? We've got the layout back full width, things look like they're supposed to, uh, we're getting there, but we're not quite there. So we're gonna, what we wanna do is take this bar, put it fixed across the bottom. That way it doesn't impede the view of the site, it's just there and it's something that's going to add to the site, not really get in the way. So what we're gonna do is go back into our layout and we're gonna work inside of this section here. So the first thing you wanna do is pull this up, go under settings, under advanced, we're gonna go to position and we're going to make this fixed. And it's gonna be fixed to the bottom and the Z index has to be over the top. And so when we do that, we can hit save. We're gonna save our layout and we're going to go back to the front end and you'll see now that things are at least partially the way we want them. So as I scroll, we've got this bar across the bottom it's really cool, join us to save. You know, we click here. Uh, it's really just gonna jump back to the top of the page because it's got an anchor link in there. But the layout is pretty close to what we want. Problem is though, is that this is gonna show to every single person every single time they come to our site 
And that's where the release of this conditional logic is really powerful. So we're gonna go back one more time into the theme builder, open up our layout that we've been working in, and we're gonna add that conditional logic to this section down here. So to do that on the section, we're gonna to go to advanced and we're gonna look at conditions. And this is where it gets pretty fun. So when we add a condition, there's so much that we can add, right? Location, could be a tag page, a category page, a post, pages, media, any of that stuff. The user can be logged in, user can be logged out. You can do it by specific role. So if you just want someone who's not signed up, you have them logged out, perfect, it'll show up. Um, you can have someone who's an admin get an alert. Um, you can do date and time, page visit, number of visits, all these things. Someone on a specific browser, you can do that as well. You can do it as a cookie. So what we're gonna do here is I, I want to do number of views. So that's gonna be the first one. How many times will I display this? So I only wanna show it to someone one time. If they interact with it, that's on them. And, and this could be different depending on what your situation is. And I wanna reset that after 14 days. Right, so I've got the number of views. I only want to show it once, and I only want to show it to them once every 14 days. The other part is I can do um, date and time. So, is only after a certain date? Is only before a certain date? Is on a specific date or a specific day of the week? Perfect example is for restaurants. Right, let's say I have specials on Monday. Or, or Wednesday, let's say it's wind down Wednesday and only wanna show this thing on Wednesday, I can check Wednesday, it's gonna show all day or I can split the times and I can have it to where it repeats every single week. It could never end or you can set a date where it ends. So if you're running a promotion in your restaurant from January to March and you only do it on Wednesdays, you've got the power to do that here. And so this right here is a combination of the two, right? So it's only gonna show once in a 14 day period and it's only gonna show on Wednesdays. So you can make combinations of all of these things and let's kind of walk through some of the other ones. So display only of post type is, and you can pick. So this is another cool one. You can, you can have a banner that shows up only if you're on a certain post type. So if it's, if it's blog posts, sure. If it's pages, yeah. If it's a post type, um, which would be what we just did. So you could do um, also a category. So if you have multiple categories in your blog, you can show it for only certain categories. If you tag, if you have a complex tag system for your blog, you can do that. I don't have any tags set up on this one yet. Um, if it's only for a certain author, you know, if you want to link off to another author's website, there's so many different things. Uh, user role was another one. If you've got custom user roles, you know, something you want to show students, if you're doing an LMS, you can do that. Um, also, login status. If the user's logged in or the user is logged out, that's really useful. You could have a custom menu at the top with Divi's Builder based on whether or not someone's logged in or logged out. That's pretty freaking cool. And whether they're a certain role, so you could have a student menu for someone who's logged in and you could have an admin menu on the front end. So if you're testing things, you can do that. It's, it's really powerful. There's so many things that you can do with this. But again, number of views is all I'm concerned with in this one. And again, just so we can go back to what I showed you a second ago, I only want this to show once and it would refresh after 14 days, but for the, for the purposes of this video, let's say we wanna only display this twice. So I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save the layout, I'm gonna exit, and we're going to jump back into the front end of the site, and we're gonna show you that this thing is, is live, right? So it's down there, it's active, and then I'm going to refresh the page. So refresh the page. So this is the second time I've seen this banner, All right? I'm gonna refresh the page one more time. And now the banner's gone. It's the third time I've seen this page. The banner's not showing to me anymore. So if I waited 14 days after what we set up in the conditional logic, if I waited another 14 days, that banner would come back. So this is some of the power of what you can do with Divi, especially with Divi 
4.11. So this is freaking incredible. There's so much more that you can do with Divi, specifically the sticky options, like the combination of the of the conditional logic and sticky options really bring a lot of power. So you can go ahead and check out the video I've done on sticky options and just keep this party going.